Hey, it's Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics, here in Flint, Michigan. A lovely day in a lost city, unfortunately. Uh, we drive around Flint, uh, Ty and I have been talking how uh, this is what you see in a lot of cities around the country that used to be a vibrant middle class, kind of like empty streets, empty lots, empty land. Uh, it's, it's, it's troubling, uh, and obviously what's happened to you the last few years is troubling. I'm here with Harold Harrington. Uh, you're with the local 370 Plumbers Union, and uh, you and I have talked for a bunch of things. Uh, in recent weeks, there's been some stories out there and declarations that Flint's water is now considered normal when you're comparing it to other cities with old lead pipes. I'm working on a story about that because I don't think that's accurate, and I don't know if the testing that declared that is accurate. Uh, but there's also something I wanted to get across. Did we title this, by the way? We didn't title this? We did? No. I gave it to you. I'm a dumbass. Uh, is people watching? Yeah. All right, I'll title it after. Um, so basically, lead is not the only problem. Uh, lead has been the main uh, you know, story. Lead obviously was found at ex extreme levels but there's also uh, galvanized pipes that have lead sponges around it. And looking at this, especially from the outside, so what you were telling me is this side is lead, this side is galvanized. Can you kind of explain for the audience, when did you take this one out that looks all sorts of gross, uh, and what are the risks uh, with this? Okay, this is what you have. Most of the people's homes in Flint have this valve in their yard. This is so the city can come out and shut your water off if you don't pay your bill. Now from the yard to the street, lead is what most of them are right now. If the house was built in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 60s, they stopped using it. But most of the houses in Flint were built before 1960. So most of them still have lead coming to your yard. From your yard, your valve box in the yard to your house is either galvanized or copper. Some of them still have lead there also. But this galvanized has acted like a lead sponge over the years. All that layer inside the pipe collected lead. Let me uh, from the, bring it up here. Say that again. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. It all collected the lead that was flowing through this lead pipe and stuck to the walls of the galvanized. That corrosive river water released a lot of that. And that's the problem we're having now with the particulate lead coming off the galvanized. A lot of the lead lines are recoating, but how do you recoat how do you recoat that galvanized? That's the question and, and nobody's got that answer. So hold that up for a second. So basically, they could change uh, they could change pipes and all that, but the galvanized that's still there, you have this sediment build up in there. Mm -hmm. So coating is fine, but that that stuff you see in there that could be leaching off, and it has lead in, in it. Yeah, right now they're doing the the restoration. They're changing the lead lines, and all the digging can break this loose. Even if they're not working on your line, if they're working next door, this can fall off of there because it's been loosened up from 18 months of river water. You know, it, it can recoat. I don't know how long it would take it to recoat with a phosphate and keep it from falling off, but that's a main problem. I mean, they're changing the galvanized lines in the, in the yard also, along with the lead, because they know that's a problem. But just so you know, this is from what? This past summer? Yeah, this was just a couple months ago this came out. So when you're seeing stories that uh, water is, you know, the crisis is over and water is back to normal, I mean, you're looking at this. It doesn't take a genius. This, the outside, this looks like this in most cities, but the inside is where you're going to have uh, lead leaching off and all sorts of things. And like you said, galvanized is harder to recoat than lead. Yeah, because it's porous. You know, it had that rust built up over the years. A lot of cities have that build up, but they didn't run 18 months of river water through it to, to loosen it up. And by the way, it's not like, you know, the ri Jesus is river water. You're talking about some of the most toxic river water in the country. Can you explain how bad that Flint river water was? Well, I mean, they're saying the only reason it done this is because they didn't put the right phosphate in it and corrosion control. I mean, people from Flint that grew up in Flint know all the things that have been dumped in that river and all the dumps around town that still leach into that river, uh, runoff, that kind of stuff. I don't think, it, you know, nobody wanted to go to that river. There was nobody in the city's idea, I can tell you that. We just uh, were forced onto that river and that's what happened. 
including General Motors uh, waste parts. Yeah, General Motors noticed it was starting to corrode their parts on their engines, and and they went back on Detroit water um, a year before Flint residents yeah. could go back on it. No, but I was saying General Motors was dumping into that river as well. Well, General Motors started in Flint in 1905, so yeah. they've been around a long time. But there's been a lot more, a lot more heavy industry in Flint back in the turn of the century that. God knows what's in that river. Mm -hmm. So if testing that looks uh, for lead, if testing that looks for lead is primarily looking at lead service lines, which the EPA basically has that lead and copper rule, which indicates, um, you know, you have to look at a certain number of lead service lines, but if that testing doesn't really look at a lot of galvanized, it's not really seeing the whole picture of at risks uh, homes. Yeah, the only way you can tell unless you dig it up in the yard, is what's coming into the house, what you got. I mean, you got three types of material coming into the house. You got copper, you got copper, lead, or, or galvanized. And, you know, lead and galvanized are both a problem. Copper coming in the house shouldn't be a problem because you don't have solder joints underground. You're not supposed to have. So it would just be a solid copper line coming into your house. Mm -hmm. So, to me, if you're not looking at what's coming into the house, um, Flint didn't keep a very good track of the records of what is feeding the house. There was little index cards from the 30s and 40s and 50s that, I mean, I don't even know if they ever got through cataloging them all. I know U of M worked on it. But I'm, I mean, I've heard from people that work in the city that 80% of the lines from the main in the street to the valve box in the yard are, are lead. Now, you don't have that much coming into the house lead because a lot of them are galvanized or copper, but even if it's galvanized coming in the house, you still have a lead line feeding it. That galvanized line collected lead over the years, was released. You still have particulate lead coming off that galvanized pipe at any given time. So even if University of Michigan Flint or anybody else was cataloging how many lead service lines they have, if they're not actually doing it based on going to check themselves, digging up the yard, those kinds of things, isn't that kind of like, how would they even confirm that? Well, if the house was built after 1960, you're not going to have a lead line. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to have s copper, probably. Now, you could still have galvanized coming in. But before that, unless you actually dig up the valve box, unless it's been replaced over the years, you know, when they change a road or do work on the street, they're supposed to change those. Mm -hmm. I don't know, unless you dig it up, how you can 100% say it, what it is. Got it. And uh, in terms of... You, they're going to ultimately change the lead service lines uh, in the street, but we were talking that a, lot, a big po portion of the problem is actual pipes in the home uh, that aren't being changed by the city or state. Yeah, these galvanized lines, they are changing if they're in your yard, but once it gets to your meter in your house, if you still have galvanized, and there's a lot of people in Flint that have never changed their pipes to copper, you know, you got that inside your house. Mm -hmm. So really, if they have galvanized in their actual home, uh, it doesn't really matter if the service lines, the service lines being fixed is helpful, but you could still have that sediment inside. Yeah, you could still have the lead flaking off the inside of the galvanized inside your house. Mm -hmm. So uh, you and I were talking because uh, there's certain scientists saying, uh, you know, Flint's problems aren't any different than any other city with old lead pipes, saying that, oh, well, yeah, the water crisis happened, but now that the corrosion control has been put in and the pipes have been recoded, Flint's back to normal, uh, normal levels compared to other cities. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are, you know, the lead being as smooth as it is will probably recoat with the phosphate, but the galvanized being as coarse and all the stuff that's inside there, you know, the difference between Flint and any other city is 18 months of corrosive river water that ran through those lines and ate into that corrosion and released everything that was in it. I don't think there's any other city in the country that's, that's done that to themselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't see how you can say it's the same as any other city. Mm -hmm. Now the infrastructure might be the same and if you ran the same type of water through another city, but I don't think that's happened. Mm -hmm. And do you think uh, more has to be uh, talked about, about the, act, the uh, current pipes uh, even with filters and things like that, it's not necessarily going to stop the stuff coming out of here in the galvanized. No, the only 
a filter will stop it, but that's why you're seeing a lot of these filters plug up so quick mm -hmm. is because of that particulate junk coming out of there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've put whole home filters in and they haven't lasted, you know, a month right. before they have to be changed. And people in Flint can't afford that. They're $150 to change a, a lead certified cartridge on these filters that we've put in. And, and, you know, that's an ongoing situation. If you went, you know, people have brought that up. What about putting filters in everywhere? Okay. There's a lot of cost to putting them in and maintaining them. Mm -hmm. and, and Flint residents shouldn't have to be responsible for the cost of that. But in, until you actually change everything that's been damaged, in my opinion, you're going to have problems with particulate lead mm -hmm. that other cities might not have because it's still stuck to the pipes and it's not releasing like Flint is. Mm -hmm. And there's the issue of the uh, stagnant water because a lot of people aren't even using the tap water. That's another problem because the system is way oversized even if they were using the water. You know, the water system used to have 200,000 people on it and 20 GM plants. You know, we get, now we got 100,000 people and five GM plants, or four, one of them's still on Detroit. But uh, the, the water is sitting in these lines so long that it's losing its chlorine, you know, and then you're running into the bacteria problems. And, you know, that's, that's a big issue too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Harold. You're welcome. Appreciate it.